Shout. This is Real Shout. Talk with PMR here on 88.1 oh, FM, me, WHPR, Highland Parks, and Detroit's favorite community station. What's up, Detroit? What's up, Highland Park? You are back. Where y'all at? Where y'all at? Yes, sir. Uh, I thought that HPR was short for your uh, nickname, Hot Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Now, before we left, before we left, we was actually talking about the 2006 Oakland County Schools accreditation scores. And we see that on top of Oakland County, you have Troy with 80, what was it, 89.5% passing grade. And then at the bottom, you're looking at Pontiac with 26%. 26%. Passing grade. Now, it actually poses a question that you made last week, Mr. Coleman. Yes, sir. Um, I don't know if you remember that, but um, let's go back to the tape last week. And it's a question that you asked. Roll the tape. And a question that I pose to them is, can we fix our schools if our communities are in a disarray? So, can we fix So can we fix our schools if our communities is in a disarray? No. Okay. No. Enlighten us. No. Schools are a microcosm of their community. And I, I spoke on it last week, but a microcosm is a smaller sample, it's a smaller system. And schools mirror their communities. So if a, a city like Pontiac, for instance, I don't know if you all are aware of this, but Pontiac leads the country in infant mortality. What right. is infant mortality? It's simply the number of babies that die after birth. Mm -hmm. Pontiac leads the country. That in itself is an indicator of poverty, uh, lack of nutrition, health care, and other issues. So if you have a community that is in disarray, that is struggling, just for the basics how can you focus on an education when you're focusing on survival so you're talking about social economic conditions yeah or for short socioeconomic conditions right now not only are we talking about the socioeconomic conditions but think about the drug trade in the 80s mm -hmm. and the collateral damage that that has caused to our community so not only are we dealing with poverty but we're also dealing with a lack of role models whether they be father figures or women. In Pontiac, I have come across more young ladies and young men whose mothers are incarcerated than in any other place I've ever been before. So the very people who are responsible for providing you with the foundation, if they don't exist or if they're not there, how can you do well in school? Right, because you know, you constantly think about, well, I don't have any parents, so why? You know, hey, how am I going to make it? But something can be done, though. I, I know something can be done. It's going to take money. Okay, but it's you can have all the money. money in the world. You can have the financial resources. But if you don't have the, the, the support team. The role the models. Literally the role model. See, we use that term mentor role model, and we make it formal. Right. Yeah. It can be that cat down the street from you. You need somebody that you can look to that is doing well. Because, see, the devil is a liar. And yeah. what he does is he places people around you who think the exact same way that you do so that you don't think that you're doing anything wrong. Okay, but yeah. how do we encourage those youth to seek after those role models? How can you ask them to do something that they've never seen or done? They don't right. know whether, that what they're doing is wrong. So when I grew up, um, we didn't look. I didn't know because the people who had money whether they had been white or black there was a mass exodus to either northwest detroit northeast detroit or to your suburbs and i don't mean your inner ring suburbs which are your ferndales um pontiacs for lack of a better phrase even the oak parks because all of those places are doing poorly now but they left so that meant that the mailman i enjoyed him coming around he gave yeah. he gave me a quarter just to push his uh mail cart up the street not knowing that i'm breaking federal law right but he knew i was a good kid and we just needed somebody right he he, he brought that positive light around but who was left i looked up to more hustlers than i did anybody well true that's when it when the drug trade came yeah and see to me and before even crack i remember heroin and the guys who had money but you know what 
they were hood rich because if they really had money we wouldn't have saw them true because true. they had cars they were going to the at that time we had shopping in our neighborhood so they were going to the neighborhood sporting goods store so they stayed fresh but they didn't have anything but that's who we looked up to because we equate as a black community success with financial let me rephrase it with material gain right so if i look successful then people are going to assume that i am but everything that i'm worth is what you see me wearing or driving so so question the community is suffering the city is suffering so of course our schools are right. too so do we just give up do we throw in the towel then I mean, if you don't, I know they used to say, what, something from nothing leaves nothing. Right. Okay. But we have to find something out of nothing. We have to, because why accept a principalship? Why accept uh, 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 the, the, the role as superintendent? If you know that the city, no, 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 mayor, why accept that role? Uh, of course, we know that, hey, uh, I want the mayorship so that I can bring the, the city out of a deficit. I, but, I, let me pause that thought. I, this is something I want you to think about. We dog the city of Detroit about how dirty it is and mm -hmm. uh, crime. I, I don't think Kwame Kilpatrick has, since he's been mayor, driven down the street and thrown a, a, a bag of used or, or old white castles out of his car on grass. It. I don't think that Kwame has gone and robbed anybody. I don't think that he has bust anybody. He has uh, caused a felonious assault on anybody. I used to tell my students this when I taught at Central in Detroit. And I would tell them that, you know, you all will come into your house, complain about how nasty it is, and then boo-boo in the living room, and then get mad because your mother or grandmother didn't clean it up. Right, right, right. And it's basically just taking pride in our own cities. Yeah, but uh, gotta, how, well, how? It's my question. If I have not, we're conditioned, we're creatures. They talk about nature versus nurture. Mm -hmm. Nature means that that is a part of who you are. It's your essence. And nurture is what you've been conditioned to become. So even if I'm inherently a good person, you put me in a bad environment. And if I stay there long enough, I'm going to develop those habits. There's yeah. a good chance that you will. In, in most cases, you will. In most Be cases. Because when you put, and, and, and in our case, we're talking about minorities. When you put minorities into unretractable poverty, when you place them into hopeless situations, all of us dream and we all want to get out. But then reality sets in. How am I going to get out? You know, I, I thought about people in my neighborhood who went off to college and they stayed a semester or so. And then they came back home. Yeah. And I'm like, man, why you come home? You got out. But then it, I, it, it dawned on me. They didn't have a roadmap. They got out there and they didn't know what to do. Right. But call right. me. I'm sorry. Call me. But were you in a hopeless situation? What? No, but I, I'm, I'm highly favored and have grace. You know, so my situation is a little different. But you had morals instilled in you, too. True. I came from a good home, but many of us have had morals have fallen by the wayside. Exactly. Yeah. So God had a purpose for my life because I did the same things that my partners did. Many of them are serving life in prison. Right. Exactly. So it's yeah. not as if I've been free from that. I just had a covering. Yeah. So people were praying for me when I wasn't praying for myself. Exactly. So, but, but still, there was no silver spoon thrown in your mouth. There was no financial resources mm -hmm. thrown in your pockets, but you still came out of it. Can't we see that our, can't we view or vision our schools doing the exact same thing? The reason why I say that, but Coleman, you know high schools that work, mm -hmm. uh, that initiative. And you know, you heard about the 90-90 schools. Is it 90-90 or 90-90-90? 90-90-90. And explain to me. Or explain to the listeners what are 90, 90, 90 schools. Those are schools that have 90% uh, minor, they're 90 minority, 90% free or reduced lunch, but with a 98, 90% uh, success rate. Okay. So no. isn't that Pontiac? Pontiac could become a, a 90, 90, 90 school. But here's the difference. Your community is in disarray. Okay. Why does every day when your son gets home from school... You either make him take a nap and eat, but at some point he has to do what? Homework. Okay. Your daughters, same thing. Same thing. So what if your environment does not support that? Whatever he doesn't get academically from that teacher is it. Right. So well, now for yeah. these kids who, so imagine your son or your daughters, they don't get it every time while they're in class. 
So right. when they come home, there's a supplement. So that teacher isn't by themselves. There's some support system in place that allows for them to, oh, okay, uh, it's like an epiphany, you know, a eureka moment, an aha moment. It's like, okay, I got it now. Because I didn't get it, Daddy, when I was in school. So what if you don't have that at home, which is the case in many of our uh, urban communities?